Hi everyone, today we're going to go through the cell cycle and I'm going to draw it on the board here. And we're going to talk about the four main stages of the cell cycle and about uh, the final stage which is going to be mitosis. So let me draw it out here as best as I can. I'm just going to basically draw a big circle. Um, we'll go ahead, maybe I'll do it this way and we'll split it uh, into four parts best I can here. And we're going to start with uh, the four stages here of the life cycle of a uh, typical cell in the body. The first stage is going to be G1, okay, which is the growth stage. So we'll just put growth stage. And we can basically think of this as like the, the, the initial stage when the cell is new. And what is it doing? It's primarily growing, okay. Let's also keep this in mind too, and I'll say it right now, that we're going to go through cell, uh, a cell cycle where the cell uh, ultimately gets to mitosis and divides. Now, majority of our cells in our body undergo mitosis, which means the cell is going to basically divide into an exact copy of itself, creating a, a, another cell. But I want to say that not every cell does that. Okay? There are cells that basically are produced from stem cells, which don't divide. Okay. Good example would be the cells of our central nervous system, the cells in the brain, and the cells in the spinal cord. That's a really good example. They don't undergo mitosis, so they're created uh, initially, right, as the uh, during the embryonic stage, as the baby's developing in the womb. Uh, they're going to be created and then don't divide. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Uh, often they are referred to as going into G zero. Okay, so I'm not going to try to attempt to draw that out, but just keep that in mind. That basically if those cells die, and you've heard the story, right, about brain cells dying, or you know, if there's an injury to the spinal cord and cells die, those cells are not going to be reproduced. They're not going to regenerate. They're not going to come back, okay? Um, so they basically are produced uh, early on during the embryo stage and then basically last as long as you're alive, and that's it. So keep that in mind, but we're not going to talk about those type of cells that don't uh, undergo mitosis, we're going to talk about just the ones that do, okay? And again, this is, in, in effect, cells that would be able to regenerate, right? If they can undergo mitosis, they can undergo what we call hyperplasia, which is an increase in cell number, okay, uh, and, and uh, regenerate. So, G1 is going to be the growth stage. We go from this stage, which is roughly, let's say, 25% of its life, to S, which stands for synthesis, that is the synthesis stage, and this is a really important stage because this is where DNA replication occurs. And that's a really important step. It is a complicated step on how DNA replicates, but this is what's happening. The, the cells of our body contain uh, DNA, right, in the nucleus, and the DNA is the same in, in, in all the nuclei uh, of our cells. It's exact, you know, a, a key copy of our DNA. It's unique to us. Now the DNA is going to be replicated, which means it's going to be copied, it's going to be duplicated, okay, at this step. And the question is, why is the DNA going to be copied or duplicated? Well, the reason is, is when we finally get to the last phase, which is mitosis, we're going to create a new cell, which is also an exact copy, like we mentioned earlier. And so we're going to need to have uh, the exact copy of that DNA. And that's one of the key things we'll talk about with mitosis, what makes it unique. One of, the, one of the things is that it's going to be an exact copy of the old cell, okay? So DNA ends up getting replicated here, which means we're doubling our DNA, okay? Kind of think of it as being put aside, okay? So theoretically, yes, cells have 46 chromosomes, but in this case, we're going to make another 46 and kind of uh, hold on to it, so to speak. This isn't perfect biology description, but hold on to it so that we have it ready to go for our uh, new cell coming after mitosis, okay? So if you added it all up, theoretically, you'd have 92 chromosomes, but I don't know if that's necessarily the best way to look at it, but that, that is true. So G2 is going to follow synthesis in G2. So keep in mind the arrow, I'm going to draw arrow so we, we are going clockwise through all this, just so we're on the same page here. All right, so we did G1, we did S, now we're on G2, which is our second growth uh, phase, right, or growth stage. Well, again, the cell is just growing more, getting bigger in size. Um, 
getting ready to, you know, again, a really important phase, which of course is going to be, I'll just put it at the top here, mitosis. Now I'm going to split mitosis here into five sections. Different books might show it as uh, four uh, parts or four steps, but I'm going to go ahead and put it as five, okay? And again, this is our final phase, mitosis. <clears throat> so again, what are going to be the five stages of mitosis? So the first stage is going to be prophase, then metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and this is the, the, the fifth one that I'm going to put in. Some books count this as a fifth, some don't. So I'm going to end with telophase, but we're going to go ahead and add this as a fifth, and it's cytokinesis. Okay, so we're going to just say there's five stages. really depends on the book and the author. But first stage of mitosis, okay, is going to be the pro, is prophase. And basically what prophase is, and, and I'm just going to quickly give you the, the main uh, event that's happening in each phase. In prophase, the genetic material, your chromosomes, are condensing. So the chromosomes are going to condense into more compact uh, material. Okay, That's basically the, the big event. Second phase here, metaphase, you'll see, and you know, they can see this uh, under, under a high-powered microscope, is that the chromosomes line up along the cell equator. Right, so picture cell being round, you know, the equator's in the center. The chromosomes will line up along that center equator of the cell. Anaphase, what happens is the chromosomes are paired, right? The, the chromosomes then start, they basically split, right? So we get the splitting of, of the paired chromosomes, okay? Big event there. And basically they start to move toward the, the, the ends of the cell, the poles of the cell, right? So picture the two ends. Telophase, what we do is we see them at the poles. We see the chromosomes at the poles, and basically what's happening is telophase is the last, I guess you'd say, official phase. So what do we have? We have 46 chromosomes over here now. We have 46 chromosomes over here. And what's going to happen in the very, very last step? Uh, cytokinesis is the splitting of the cytoplasm where basically the cells are going to split into two. So then what do we wind up with? We wind up with basically two identical cells. And again, that is what mitosis is. It's one cell basically dividing into an exact copy of itself. Okay, and the DNA has to be the same. Okay, it has to be copied exa exactly the same. You know, we, we don't want any mistakes or problems or mutations because if we get something different, then it's no longer an exact copy. It has to be exact copy of the previous cell. Okay, that's what mitosis is. Mitosis will occur faster if cell regeneration needs to take place. It'll be slower if it doesn't need to take place. The cells are tightly packed. You know, we've got a lot of rapidly dividing mitotic cells in the body. A good example are skin cells. They're rapidly uh, dividing, um, and that's why the skin heals very, very well, very, very quickly um, when there's injury. Now, don't get this confused. This is uh, mitosis, again, being the uh, most common you know, type of, of cell uh, division or cell regeneration possible. Again, like we said, allowing for hyperplasia. Don't get this confused, though, with meiosis. And we'll do another video on meiosis, which really is more complicated because, it's for one, it actually has these same phases, but it's going to go through one round, and then it goes through a second round. So it basically goes through these five steps and then it does them again, a second round. And the difference is meiosis is only for the egg and the sperm. And the big difference with meiosis is that you do not wind up with exact copies. Okay, you also wind up with a reduction in the number of chromosomes. Okay, so with mitosis, we start with 46, we end with 46. Okay, with meiosis, we start with 46, we end with 20 because the egg has 23 chromosomes, the sperm has 23 chromosomes, and when they unite, of course, they restore the normal 46 paired chromosomes.
chromosomes, okay, or four, 23 pair of 46 total chromosomes. So keep that in mind. Meiosis is similar, it has some similarities to mitosis, but yet very, very different, and only and exclusively for egg and sperm. So quick rundown on how this works. Again, we'll do another video, so look for that on meiosis. But for now, this is where we're going to leave it. Uh, Till next time, good luck and good studying.